Toughest ticket in college basketball on this particular Saturday. Chris Mack in his second year as a head coach at Louisville after nine very successful years at Xavier. Starting lineups, the same starting five for Chris Max Cardinals all the way through with a lot of experience there. Three fifth-year seniors for John Calipari. Keon Brooks making his first start of the season. And as always, a lot of freshmen on the floor for Kentucky. Cal in his 11th year as the head man here in Lexington. Maybe Brooks to match up with Wara. Could we'll be. See. He didn't start last week against Ohio State, and as I said, the first time he started this year. Three great officials with us, Don Daly, Pat Adams, Ron Groover. Don's got it in hand, and we're underway between the Cards and the Cats. And Brad Nestler. The Cats go a little, wait a minute. That they do. A little horn set, a little ball screen. Oh, this knock way out on top. Here's Darius Perry at the points. McMahon feeds the post. Nick Richards trying to hold his ground against Enoch, and the hook is off the mark, and a whistle and a foul. Right off the bat. And they're going to stay right there. I don't know if this is on Montgomery on that far side, but pretty good defense individual. Enoch, one of those guys that can dribble, make the hook, can step out and make a deep one. Montgomery with a little shove trying to get rebounding position, so fresh 20 on the shot clock. And now they're already separating players down there, Brooks and Laura. It's early and can be unattractive. Laura off the inbound, He's looking to shoot. He thinks offense. He's got some talent. Very good without the ball as well. He not get it stripped by Higgins. And a foul. So two quick fouls, and John Calipari's already one of the officials. John's pointing at the other end. They haven't been down the other end yet. <laughs> but that's what Hagens does. He's a good pilfer of the basketball. Leads He's Kentucky and steals as he did a year ago. So we're trying to get this thing started. Uh, did you just stand up? I heard that boy. <laughs> Last two games. A team foul situation in Kentucky. There's a nice drive. And a reverse by Sutton. Oh, he is tough. Use that rim to ward off. Explosive. Here's Haggins. A lot of dribble drive you'll see when they make that shot mid-ranger deep. Haggins not only running the show, he leads Kentucky in scoring at just under 14 a game. And here he is on the drive and a kick out. They work it around to Brooks. Back to Montgomery, five on the shot clock. Haggins is going to have to take it. Yeah, he might not get it off. They didn't. Boy, That's not, a bad possession. Yeah, not good recognition. Guys passed up shots and opportunities. In a way, I'm sure John saying we want to share the ball a little bit, but somebody's got to be conscious of the clock. But once again, Louisville, they talk about their offense. They are an outstanding defensive team. The opposition shoots only 35% against Louisville. That's third in the country. That's what Raph's talking about. And on a fadeaway is Perry. And they lifted everybody. Little bump at the foul line. Perry delivers. Use those post rubs. Makes him very good at curling as well as drifting. Maxie got a switch off and take the jumper and got it. He can be streaky, and that's a good start for him. He likes big names, I think, right? <laughs> Michigan State, teams like that. That's right. 26 against Michigan State was his best night so far. That man really stretches the defense. Got to hug him. Here's Moore on a runner. Too strong rebound off to Richards. Kentucky looking to run. Maxey in the paint. Offensive foul. They do not give up. Fast break opportunities, Louisville. Offering it up. May have gotten away with it. A little slide under, I thought, just a little bit late. Three team fouls in less than three minutes for Kentucky. Well, John Calipari is up early. He didn't like any of the first three. Letting Ron Groover know that over on the sideline. He, Groover's giving him what you give me, the deaf ear. <laughs> <laughs> nice cut. Moore is so available. 
Here's McMahon, great three-point shooter. Winning push pass underneath. Great look by McMahon. What a great cut, too, to set it up as well. Off the dribble, the little guy who's dynamite from three. Bump and curl. Actually around the pick to get it back inside of Richards. See if he'll go to the rack. He likes He's going to be bumped from behind. He likes to bounce to that hook. And, of course, this ruckus crowd giving him a little heat. Uh, but the ability to make a pass and set your man up. A lot of guys lift, back cut. And we mentioned the glue guy gets available. Sestina checks in for Kentucky for the first time. He was big against Ohio State in the loss. Raft and I, uh, Jamie Irwell saw last week at Las Vegas. Well, you get that shot. Did you get back from Vegas? I mean, you there for took me a while. You <laughs> <laughs> stayed up there all week. Dina got a hook, misses everything, and kept alive on the baseline by Sutton. And what Sestina does for this team is a little more pick and pop. A little bit, bit more juice on the offensive end from deep. What a job he's done, huh? Xavier and now at Louisville. The guy can coach. There's a lob in the Enoch, one of those 50 year seniors on the floor. Three is off the mark. Higgins tracks it down and looking to push it for Kentucky. He'll push it all the way on his own number. In and out there. And the rebound off the McMahon. Four red shirts back. What solidity. Perry all the way around the baseline out. McMahon will take the outside jumper. Higgins again. A handoff from Christina. The lob. Not a good one, but Richards finds a handle look momentarily. At, look at the hands defensively. Boy, deflections, raking, scraping. No easy fast breaks. This team is just excellent in defensive transition. Collecting at the rim. And I actually thought that was a play on, some scrappy play. Yeah, they called a foul on Darius Perry. It will be his first, team second on Louisville. Blake Williams is coming in. Enoch goes out so they don't lose any size at all. Enoch at 6'10. Malik Williams 6'11. And he loves that 3 2. He'll drift out shot outside Williams. Good rebounder, shot blocker. There's the pick and pop, and they're up on him. Under 10 to shoot. Hagen's lobs to Richards in for Scott. Nice look by Hagen's. You've got confidence in your ability to deliver. Not a easy angle. Nick Richards has as many points as he did the entire game against Ohio State. As right now. He had a rough day. He no did question have a about rough it. Day. But the fouls, he's got to be careful too. War the three. Uh, you love when he settles like that. Challenge jumper. I know he can make them. He can elevate now. Sestina, that's a mismatch over McMahon, but he missed the shot. Didn't get any air under it. Five minutes in, Louisville by two. He's done a lot of misdirection stuff, too. He's both sides of the floor, there's that shuffle. Warren knows how to get free. Brooks is staying with Warren pretty well. Well, he missed the slam, though. Well, that was great defense, great recognition. And foul inside is going to be on Williams. Uh, both coaches teach great defense. Weak side help, pay attention to detail, be in the right spot, and use that elevation to negate big time. We got a good one here, Brad. The one thing you want it to be this year is number one in the country. Kentucky beat Michigan State, probably their best performance of the year. They were number one until Evansville came in here and upset them at Rupp. Stephen F. Austin did the same at Cameron to Duke when they were number one. Then Louisville fell on December 10th.
to Texas Tech, and then finally, Villanova over Kansas last Saturday. They found out Raft and I were coming on January 11th to Allen Fieldhouse. They figured they'd lose two. So two weeks is about the best you can do. Louisville had the number one ranking December 2nd and 9th before losing, and now Gonzaga wearing the collar. We'll see how they do with all of that. And that probably tells you how even the country is yeah. and how great the NCAA tournament's going to be. Uh, you must be prepared, and particularly these two teams are prepared defensively. They've really understood the scouting report, playing their individuals and team defense sensationally early. Kentucky's problem has been finding a consistent score. They normally have a great shooter. They really don't have one on this team, at least not yet. What's the hook? Richards working the lane. Over to Quickly, who just checked in for the first time. Seven on the shot clock for Higgins. Sestina's going to take a three for the lead. And the Bridges keep it alive. Nice Massey pass. moves it around quickly, quickly. And he missed a three. He's the one guy I think you can count on quickly. And they got it over the top. Sestina. Good ball movement again. You got to compliment by making a shot here and there. 14 foul already. Only six minutes into the game. Louisville started off three for five from the floor. They missed their last five. And that three for five turned into 30% in a hurry. There's so many open passing lanes because McMahon stretches his guy. You got to be honest on him. It's quickly guarding Warren now. And here's that matchup. Four on the shot clock. McMahon's got to let it fly. Rimmed out a three. Sestina had his hands on the rebound and then lost it out. And it'll be Louisville ball, as we remind you. The Grammys aren't about what you expect. They're about everything you don't. Alicia Keys hosts the Grammy Awards. Unexpect everything. Live Sunday, January 26th on CBS. Uh, this club, Louisville, runs great. Out of bounds plays. You've got to be alert. They'll loop. They'll cross screen. They'll hit and follow. Here's the ability to go right. They set it up. Nice job by Montgomery to cut off Sutton. Sure was well prepared. Sutton trying to go to work on Montgomery in the paint and has to give it up again. Good defense by Kentucky. Here's the pass out with four on the shot clock. Way off the mark. Wara pulled it off the backside but threw it right to Sestina. Just look at the balance, though. Maxey pulls up, drains it. Early offense. Kentucky's first lead. And all of a sudden, there's life in Rupp Arena. And they believe. And a whistle before the shot. I don't think it's a Montgomery. It's not quickly. It's quickly, yeah. A little pin down series they run. Now, this is just a great kick. Get them organized. Get those puppies square up and get a little nylon. And boy, what a welcome relief for this team. So Maxie's hit two outside shots, which I said he could be streaky. That's a good, a good deal for him. A good omen, possibly, for the rest of the game for Kentucky. Nice job pushing Enoch off that block. Enoch crossing the lane, threw it away. Once again, great balance. Got to use both sides of the floor if you're Kentucky. Make this defense move. Austin Higgins directed traffic at the point. Looking to take advantage. Montgomery, there's a big mismatch with Kimbo Fresh Kimbo. <laughs> Fresh felt uncomfortable <laughs> with that big guy. <laughs> Yeah. He was giving away about 10 inches there, trying right. to guard Montgomery. Uh, you can see well coached teams, though you're always willing to help. Sneak down, help out your partner. Don't leave them unattended. They can pop. Here's the Stina. He's had a little hook game, too. There it is. Got there you go. The dog. He can play in and out. This kid is a talented performer. Louisville now low, 0 for its last seven from the floor. Wara, 0 for 8. He's Rebound got, Maxi. He's got to go to the rim a little bit. He's settling. 
Sestina nice thought about pop. a three. Got it inside of Montgomery underneath, but he missed him close. What a great look. Catchable. Got to finish it big time. I think they got Sestina on another one. He picks up his second foul, but he also picked up points on the other end. Uh, he knows how to play. We've seen him make the deep one. Little head and shoulder, no shampoo, but a little smile on the delivery. The ACC's leading scorer off to a slow start, Raph. Yeah, he's struggling. He, he, these two attempts here, one on a floater, eventually we'll see the jam. But I thought he settled 0 for 4, but this is just a great attack here. More of that, the way they lift people and move you around. He'll have some uncontested looks at the rim. Comes in averaging over 21 a game, which is tops in the conference. He was the preseason ACC Player of the Year, and unanimous All-American in the preseason rankings and off to a little bit of a rough start here at Rupp. He, he has been fun to watch though all year yeah. long. He's got a great flair for that offensive game. And once again, baseline out of bounds. You've got to be prepared. A lob to Wara and then clear maybe and let him drive. Here is Wara. Fade. Pull up. Good range jumper. That one rims out too, but followed nicely by Enoch. Great call to get Warren going though. Real good look. Soft delivery enables the little knockdown. So that ended a streak of 0 for 9 from the floor on that putback by Enoch, his first basket. Richards. Strong move in that hand. I like that. No hesitation there at all. Right away, a little power. He put that three or four feet from the box, though. Big fella, a little bit large. Man, trying to get quickly off him. What the Richards does, he strings it out really good. They don't get back. Kimball to Enoch. Uh, that's not his fault. He went a little too far on the string out, Richards. Left the back bare and no weak side attention. Kentucky, including Whitney, who's on the drive right now, and he draws a foul from Samuel Williamson. Well, this is a really nice play at this point. You can see that little ball screen. Richards gets hung, hung up here, playing the little guy, and all of a sudden, big time at the tip. Enoch with four. Sutton with four to lead the way for the Cardinals so far. Almost the midway point of the first half. McMahon will sit down. Darius Perry coming back in. Tucky works it around the perimeter. Back to Maxi. Eight on the shot clock. Really on the perimeter. Got an attack. Quickly kick out. One more pass. Brooks has got to put it up. Missed the three and a foul in the paint. It's with the offensive rebound. Did a good job. Foul's going to be on Williamson, his second already. Stream CBS Sports HQ. Completely free and always on Sports News Network for nonstop highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. And Williamson, you mentioned with the two big time looking prospect, he's going to really have a great career. McDonald's All American out of Rockwall, Texas. Quickly thought about a deep three, backs away, and now six on the shot clock. You may have to take it anyway. Maxi way out. Had to rush that one, but Richards with the offensive rebound. Oh boy, you need second possessions against this excellent defense. Turnovers, offensive rebounds. This is the richest they've been looking for. Yeah, a lot more active than a week ago. As you said, he only played 12 minutes because of foul trouble, but today playing a lot better. Stepped out of bounds. One first turnover there on Maxi. Checking up for the Tucky as Driving against Kimball and 
He slipped with that right foot. You see it there. Pretty good defense using that baseline to support you. So Sutton comes back in. Wara goes out in a bad. You tell John Calipari that Wara would not have scored in the first ten and a half minutes. He'd take it. Absolutely. Good collective defensive scheme. Kimball trying to get free from Hagens, and a lot of people can't do that. He's he almost Ooh. went over and back. It was close. And now on the drive, he put it over Richards. Oh, this kid has had a great career. St. Joe's, of course, three-time captain. On a bash, going to the rim with the big guy. Over a thousand points when you add up his points at St. Joe's, and now what he's done here at Louisville. Where he does a nice job, either tailing or going over the top. Higgins going to try a triple. Got it. Well, Kimball relaxed just a little, snuck a peek and paid. Higgins not a big time outside shooter, but he's getting better in that area. He's got a total game, that kid. Trying to get around that high screen, finally did. McMahon. Offensive foul. That was Williamson, I beg your pardon. And that's three on him. Would you call this a home court advantage uh, right now? Yeah, I think it is right now. Ooh, there is some noise in Williamson, who we mentioned a little bit earlier. Great looking prospect. It's three. Being on the road, maybe a little uncomfortable trying to force the issue. This place can make you uncomfortable. Well, yeah, absolutely. Luke Murray was chatting away there. You're the wearing red. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't see many red here. There's not a lot. Clad in red. That's a foul. He can't afford that at that far from the basket. Richards, the guard could have been involved starting a little prematurely. And he's going to try and protect his big guys. Got to give him a chance to get planted. That extra step cost him. Under eight in the first half. Kentucky by two. Here's Wara on the drive, and one. I, I just love what they set up there. Iso on the foul line. He loves going right, but why not deliver a little bounce, finish, a little kiss at the rim. First tie of the game, first basket of the game for Jordan Wara, 14 up. Game summary so far, neither team exactly lighting it up. 39%, 43% for Kentucky, but credit the defense, I think, on both sides for that. And Nick Richards, who only played 12 minutes in the loss to Ohio State last Saturday, has really showed up here in the first half. Right? Well, he's done a great job on the glass defensively, giving them extra possessions, looks, and opportunities. He's got to stay out of foul problems, though. This was just a gorgeous old-time rolling hook, and why not find a big fella? Let him dominate down low. We've got our first trip to the free throw line coming up today with 7.53 to go in the half, and that'll be Jordan Wara, who scored right before the timeout. Well, they put him in so many positions. The defense is vulnerable. Very talented off the bounce. Jordan Jr. out of Buffalo, New York, a 80% free throw shooter. Not a fan favorite here, I take it, huh? Apparently not. So that's his opening three of the game. We keep Ryan Richards a little bit. He's on the floor. See if Williams can beat him in that box area. Here he comes. Not a pick and pop guy, though, Brad. Maybe a pick and roll. Barry hits the deck. Maxi had an open three and buried it. Wow, that dribble drive collapsed the defense. And Maxi gets him organized. That's his second three. And the only shot he missed was a three that he had to hoist right before the shot clock expired. So his hand is pretty hot right now for Kentucky. And you mentioned him being streaky. Links the bright lights, I think. Six on the shot clock for Wara with Richards on it. Crossover, three-pointer, off the mark. Kept alive, though, by Williams. 
And he did not do a great job giving them extra opportunities. Kimball thought about a three over Higgins and backs away. Now he draws Richards on the switch. Going to have to hustle. Nice backdoor cut. Oh. Beauty to Sutton. That's what they do. They bail out the dribbler. Great understanding. You sneak a peek, you pay dearly. Tied at 17. Toe-to-toe -to -toe action here, Brad. Back it off. Neither team's been able to get out to anything more than a four-point lead for Louisville, a three-point lead for Kentucky. Here's Richards. Nice job defensively underneath, and now those two are shoving. He and Malik Williams, so officials didn't see it. Higgins has to take a shot at the buzzer. Let's see if that materializes on the other end again now, Richards and Williams. You yeah, see a lot of empty trips with this great defense. There's that matchup, but he's just going to go straight over Richard Short on the jumper, and Maxey comes out of the pile on the run. Leaves it for Brooks. And a blocking foul good call. on Kimball. Real good call. One of the few opportunities where they had three on two. Tuesday, January 7th, follow the FBI's Fugitive Task Force as they hunt down the most dangerous criminals in America. If you're on the list, Raft usually is, they're on your trail. <laughs> Series premiere of FBI Most Wanted Tuesday, January 7th on CBS. I've been on a lot of lists, but not that one that got. <laughs> so at the free throw line, Keon Brooks, who made his first start here today, and he's hasn't been to the line much and has struggled when he's been there. 53% free throw shooter. And of course, he rips it. And Brad, you told me maybe 75 games you've had at Rupp. Got to be close to that. Jeez, that's incredible. You can remember each and every one of them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember the games. It's the next day, I'm not too sure. Well, I, I know what you did after that. That's game. because early flights. Early flights. They have a 6, they have a 550 and a 715 out of here. Keon Brooks <laughs> hits both free throws. So much for him not being a good free throw shooter. Good job to give Kentucky a two-point lead again. A little exasperated, John, over there. Just amazing. One of the hardest places to coach, I think, in the country. Oh, yeah. And be that successful. This is incredible. And every year, a new team, I, I don't know how he does it. Having a couple of sophomores and a junior this year is about as many pieces as he usually has back. Five on the shot clock, McMahon with Richards out on him. Now trying to drive and will. Got a pretty decent shot out of it, but Montgomery will clear off the miss. And Richards with great footwork and not fouling. Higgins, a little hesitation and then the scoop shot. A little hesitation and blow by. McMahon got three of them back in a hurry. Well, you just can't leave that kid alone. All the coaches are upset. You got to tag him. Great stroke. His 31st, a 32nd, I should say, of the year, and the first one today for the Cardinals. He's taking 83 deep ones already this year. Richards up oh, under goodness. and too far in. You know where you are. Ran out of real estate down there under the basket. And they're going to kick it out. An excellent defense, though, to roll up. Checking up for Kentucky is John Juicy. Richards actually looks a little winded. He's been out there for a long stretch. Montgomery's got to do something for Kentucky, I think. Give him a little bit of a lift. That foul line jumper and a high low. Here's Juzang just checking in for Kentucky, trying to guard and stay with McMahon, who's running baseline screens, trying to look for another three, and there it goes. Kept alive by Williams underneath. Missed it over Richards. Nice job again by Richards. Under the four-minute mark, Kentucky clinging to a one-point lead, and they're going to take... We got a technical. Ooh. I thought it was going to be a timeout, and now it's a technical. No timeout. You're right. It is a timeout. Well, anytime they point at you, you wonder. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Ashton Higgins, watch this little hesitation. A little lingerie on the deck with the blow by. A little kiss, Brad, in Lexington KY, as Joe Dean used to say. This is Jamie Erdahl and the rest of our CBS crew from El Paso. There's a couple of legends for you. Joe B. Hall and Danny Crum. How about that? They have a few wins, don't they? 1,048, you told me. Is that what it is? Well, I, the three of us have 1,200. <laughs> The old backward story, unfortunately, it, right. uh, they've got 1,100 of them, right? 76 national championship on the left and 80 and 86 on the right for Coach Crum at Louisville and sitting together today. We had a chance to go over there and talk to him briefly before we tipped off two of the best. They had a radio show. Did you ever hear the radio show? I, I heard about it, yeah. I was on it a few times, and let me tell you, the convincing that went on, the great <laughs> rivals, but great pals. Darius Perry. Zang on the floor. Let's see if he can make a shot for this club. Drive him. Drive him. Trying to. Wore a fadeaway over Richards. Tough shot. Settled again. Zang with the rebound. And Richards really magnificent early on D. Nice pass. Nice lead to Montgomery. There's what you've been looking for. A little help from Montgomery. He got help from Higgins. Higgins came in with 80 assists. Not too many better than that one. Well, he's always got his hands busy. Oregon a little frustrated, not getting touches. Here's a banging going on with Enoch great, over Richards. Great left hand, great presence. He's got that little mid range, can step out. Magnificent, polished, left hand delivery. Chris, Chris Mack told you and I in the locker room, sometimes he looks at Enoch and thinks, man, you can dominate. You just got to think that you can. And he did on that move. He's got six for the game. Back screen pop. A pop shot with a right hand. Are you kidding me? Quickly to the 10. And fast as well. <laughs> Approaching two minutes. Quickly's first basket. An odd-looking shot that found at home. I think they got to get Enoch inside a little bit. Perry rejected by Richards. Right out the war, though. Another block. He's out of bounds. How about that defense? A block shot. And then War steps out. Richards, the lion-hearted. That's all for him. He has been magnificent. Big time. Presence. Sending a big time message as well. Kentucky with a three point lead and looking to add to it here in the final couple of minutes. Maxey feeds it inside to Montgomery with a left hook. And it'll be pulled off the backside by Enoch. Sutton pull up in and out of the three. Richards will clear the glass again to Higgins. Sutton's been quiet, too. Quickly back to Higgins. Gave up an open three. <laughs> Richards was too tired to come over half court. He was like Wilt. <laughs> Throwing up a prayer and hoping for a foul, and he got it. Smart little play. Perry picks up his second foul. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Adam, Seth, and Steve will have first half analysis and a look at the other action going on today. That's all coming up. AT&T at the half. How about the laugh coming east? Yeah. He loves the sun, that boy. Clark was in Knoxville earlier. So laps in his chair. Quickly. Good free throw shooter. He's only missed two all season. Perry sits down with his two personals. Now Richard's down at the other end, really inhaling. He's been on the floor quite a bit and dominating. <laughs> Biggest lead for Kentucky. Don't underestimate these cats, though. They'll grow as the season progresses, I think. They always do. Yeah. Approaching a minute. 
A wild catch by five, and their crowd standing at Rupp Arena. I'd give Enoch some touches inside. Kimball got around it. Hagan somehow. I don't know how. Oh, he's nifty. Really smart kid. Explosive, too. Sort of a quiet quickness. Man really does guard well. Oh, Maxi shot him up today. Well, got that one away. Go to the free throw line. And that's the trail by McMahon. A real smart move coming left and getting the attention, drawing the foul. So Tyrese Maxi, Mr. Basketball in the state of Texas last year as a senior. Steps up, eight points leading the way for Kentucky right now. Chance for the free throw line to add to it. And this kid likes big shots, too. Well, free to the moment. He could become the consistent shooter that John Calipari desperately needs on this team. You know, you watch them in practice, the strokes are fine. They're unbelievable. Last week, too, remember the practice yeah. out in Vegas? Lighten it up. A little bit of tightness when they hit the real court. You know, they're a little more acclimated on their home floor, and they're not playing like it today. I think that was beating you when they got a little bit tight. <laughs> yeah, I scare people that way. Ten for Maxi. No two for one. Louisville's going to give it right back to the Wildcats. Timeout. Get it organized probably for the last one. 27.2 to the break and a five-point Kentucky lead. Kentucky with the ball and a five-point lead with 27 seconds remaining in the half. They're looking at how Dino Gaudio has the scout for this game. Loves his basketball. Did a lot of TV for a while. Yeah, Dino was the scout with the Ohio State-Kentucky game, and we said to Chris Mack in the locker room before the game, he said that doesn't matter that much. They could come out and light it up today <laughs> shooting, and they've done pretty well compared to a week ago. Dribble drive, but I would love to see Richards get a touch. They go a little bit of his own look here. Higgins out to a wide open Maxi for three, and he got it. They got a chance, got to push it. Got to go to the goal. Got to hurry. Fresh Kimball working against Higgins. His three is off the mark, and Kentucky at home with an eight-point lead at the break. Eight seems large in this game, doesn't Boy, it? does it not. With the defense that's being played, it seems like 13. Good half for Kentucky at Rupp. They lead it at the end of the first half, 32-24, as we head to Adam Zucker in New York. Zuck? Now, there's some houses divided. <laughs> this can separate families, whether you're a Cardinal fan or a Kentucky fan. <laughs> Halftime at Rupp. Welcome back, everybody. 32-24. Brad Nestler with Bill Raftery. The only other time, Raft, that Louisville was behind at halftime was Texas Tech. Jordan Wara had a tough game, a season low. They're behind right now, and he's having another tough half. It's interesting you would compare those two games. Uh, the defense is the reason. Right. They've really done a great job on him, making tough catches, putting him in position where he's taking some bad shots. Let's take a look at our progressive insurance first half stats. Trouble from outside the arc for the Cardinals, too. Only one three-pointer so far. Wara with just three points. And Tyrese Maxey's led the way for Kentucky. He's had the hot hand, only missed one shot. Well, you mentioned he likes the bright lights, the big moment, and why not? Get those puppies organized in an early break. Not too many opportunities like this, but he has stepped up, and they have needed him. Uh, really, the bad experiences from deep the last couple of weeks. But this is the main guy. He's got to keep doing this. Jordan's got to put it on the deck. Don't settle deep. That'll come. Give him some more opportunities to lift his club. This is a tough place to come back from a halftime deficit of eight. We'll see how Louisville can do. How about those numbers there? 
We need him to light it up. Sutton has not really done a big bang up job on the glass. Something I think they he's got to put his stamp on this particular half if they're going to win it. A riled up crowd of 24,000 as always. Kentucky did a good job of taking care of the ball as well. They didn't have a turnover in the last eight minutes of the first half. And they had all kinds of turnover problems when we saw them a week ago. So this is a buttoned up club compared to the Ohio State loss last Saturday. Well, they're letting them play in the low box area. Somebody's going to get a cheapie. Maxi against McMahon. Seven on the shot clock. The kick out to Hagans and he's out of bounds. Wow. Not a bad cut, but you got to know where you are. That's what I said. They didn't have a lot of turnover <laughs> problems. They throw one away. You're a jinx. Tough when you got the two bigs on the floor for Kentucky because Montgomery's not known as a deep shooter. Darius Perry at the point against Hagans. Need War to keep moving, keep available. McMahon got bumped by Maxi. A little nickel dimer on the baseline. That's what McMahon's done. He's really improved his ability to put it on the deck and be creative. Redshirt senior out of Sarasota, Florida. And a really good three-point shooter when he has an opener. Your old partner, Dick Vitale, recommended him to Patino. There you go. I'm sure you got a cut somewhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only get get something out of it. Uh, <laughs> we got a book out of it. Is he not? Nice. Uh, and under and around. Uh, how about that? Leave it all on the deck defensively. Pretty. Yips and touches down there. Maxie around a pick. Had a good look. Look at this kid again. Richards. Was he shoved? Yep, he was. And just great activity. But you get good shots. You got people helping out. All of a sudden, there isn't a checkout possibility at the rim. But Maxie, really good activity and a great look. Enoch picks up his second foul. Richards. It'll send Nick Richards to the free throw line. First trip for Nick. Five boards to go with his four points. He has some very good defense. Coming to CBS All Access January 23rd series premiere of Star Trek Picard. The legendary captain coming out of retirement for one last mission. Journey begins. The legacy continues. It's Thursday, January 23rd on CBS All Access. Reading the notes, he loves Christian Ronaldo. So he's a bit of a soccer fan. So it's five and five for Richards. Points and rebounds as he hit the second. He's got a big responsibility. This is a tough match, particularly on the glass, too. Enoch missed a three. Went right into the hands of Sutton. Back uh -oh. out to McMahon. His three's off the mark. Well, who's going to get it? Higgins comes clear with it. And he runs it up and lays it in for Montgomery. How about the speed of the big fella? Second time today that Higgins has laid an easy one on Montgomery for his two baskets. All because of the loose stuff they came up with. Kentucky up nine. And McMahon is bumped by Maxie again, and that's a problem now. That's three on Maxie. Nice job selling it, too, by McMahon. And I think Calipari's going to have to go to quickly, quickly, and get Maxie out of there. They get him in in a hurry. And you can see that arm out there, too. Very clever by McMahon. That was a little cheap. Yeah. Small change. I don't even think it was nickel diamond. No, I think it's penny. Absolutely. Two penny. It's amazing. Oh, really not getting any touches no. early on here. We'll be looking at him. Go to him a little bit. He's got to be more active, too. He's just standing around now, right now looking at Brooks guarding him. Well, that's a settle. Nothing that trip. That is not push back basketball. 
Richards battling with Enoch underneath. Higgins pull up from the free throw line. Ooh, man, some banging going on underneath for that rebound. Boy, is it a... I'm not sure who that's on. That is a war. Call, call it on the whole front line of both teams. And they foul it on Richards. Look at all this at the rim. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Look out below. So Nick gets his second. Justina comes back in for the Wildcats and Montgomery sits. Justina's quiet today so far after his season high 17 last Saturday. Look at those two fouls early. Samos. This is a better matchup offensively, I think, for Kentucky. He's playing that full little kick here. Speaking of Ronaldo, huh? Justina got a foot on that, so they reset the shot clock at 20. Not sure what Pat was talking about. I don't either. They had a great baseline inbound for Louisville. Now this is that 1 4 setup, and they have a lot of wrinkles on it. Now they'll give an opportunity to clear and drive. War against Brooks. Had it stripped by Brooks. Nice defense. Higgins pull up triple. An open look. Another look for Quigley. He got it. Double-digit lead for Kentucky. Timeout, Lula. Kentucky by a dozen as we take a look at our AT&T fast analysis so many times Bill Raftery good defense turns into good things on the other end uh, both clubs play excellent defense and the ability to move the legs and then insert the hands Laura who struggled and trying to get him on track but how about this big time snatch and then the presence to kick and why not get him organized a little nylon Pretty big time basketball, and they are tough at home, and they can guard. Quickly's three has given Kentucky the 12 point advantage at the 1653 mark. Or a little bit of a blow right here. See if Williamson can get going on three fouls in that first half. He couldn't get on track. Yeah, he didn't play very much because of that foul trouble. Once again, Sutton quiet. I think he can drive Sustina if he gets the opportunity. And Sutton rejected by Richards, but they're going to call him for a foul. Ooh, what a good presence. Helping out. Nice body search, though, by Sutton. Talk about the little things he does. Oh, just a little bit with a left hand, yeah, I guess. Yeah, a little bit of a nudge. Louisville has made one free throw today in one attempt. And here's two coming up for Sutton. They still made one free throw. He's such a smart guy, knows who's guarding him, what he has to do. Richards gets a little bit of a blow with that foul. I guess they replayed the block, huh? Yes, they did. Sutton got the second seven for Dwayne Sutton. Lead still double digits for Kentucky. Three point shooting. Kentucky 50% today. There's Higgins on the drive. Has to leave it in the lane. Extra pass. They had Sistine earlier. Brooks, two to shoot. In a hurry. And shot clock violation. Didn't hit the rim on the move inside. Well, if you're going to get back in, you got to do it at that end, Louisville. Plenty of time. Really out of sync offensively, though. Enoch on the floor, not getting ample opportunities to touch it. And Laura still looking at three points on one three-point play. Not on the floor right now. High low, which they hadn't run at all. We got a nickel diver here. Goodness. Wow. So 
the foul is on Montgomery, his second for just under 16 minutes remaining. Louisville's got to find some offense, trailing by 11. Tomorrow is the final Sunday of the regular season, and the NFL on CBS Doubleheader features a full slate of games that will determine the playoff fates of a lot of teams. All starts with the NFL today. JB and the guys at noon Eastern right here on CBS. And the playoff picture as it looks right now. Baltimore with the 13-2 mark and a home field advantage. Jim and Tony and Tracy will have the Tennessee-Houston game, and that'll have a lot on the line. And if you're a Baltimore fan, you're a Lamar Jackson fan. If you're a Lamar Jackson fan, you're a Louisville fan. As he won the Heisman Trophy there not that long ago. And people said, oh, maybe he's not good enough for the NFL. He's only going to be the MVP. But other than that, I'd say he's good enough. Heck of a year he's had. Man. And then as well. Once again, you got to be ready for the baseline. Very difficult to defend. So many different looks they give you off this. Is the lob, okay. and they, they did the homework early. There's Enoch against Montgomery. Normally it's Richards on him. Montgomery trying to stay on his hip. And there's a hook shot and one. And a great call. They do so many good things with wrinkles and Enoch. If they're going to make a push, they need some inside baskets. It's been a struggle deep. The old time a rolling hook. Against Montgomery, he's got a little bit more of a size advantage than Richards. Pretty shot and a chance for a three-point play. And we've seen him do it left and right. Yep. He kind of kid. Big three-point play. Found the home in Louisville. Did he ever. Richard Sr. Well, that's what Chris was saying to both of us. We have older guys. They're very coachable, mature. Three, five, fifth-year seniors. He looked at you when he said mature. I don't know what he meant by it. But <laughs> when he said we have an old team, he looked at you. <laughs> when age by his suits coming. That's right. He has a good defense. They've been tough. Quickly, nice crossover over McMahon. What elevation. Nine for Emmanuel quickly. Springs. Sutton going to take one straight away from three, and he buried it. Uh, this going to do anything you have to do to help your club win. That's 10 for Dwayne Sutton, and it cuts the lead to seven. And no war at all, by the way. Couple of new subs coming in. Or that on the floor, and not nice. getting ready to come in. And now Sutton, the overplay on Sestina. And Sestina goes into the photographers, but he did prevent the slam dunk. It's going to send Sutton to the free throw line. Oh, a great effort, but we'll jump in that passing lane. Got to show it. And once again, we mentioned in the open, this blue guy, what do you need, coach? Steps up big time, Sestina not giving up on the play. Did a nice job to play the ball. We'll send Sutton back to the free throw line. Sutton went over the 1,000-point mark between UNC Asheville and his Louisville career in the last game, so he's tacked on 11 more today. That's along with about 750 rebounds, too, as Raph said. He could do it all. He's standing with that third foul, staying on the floor. Richard comes out, Richards comes back in. This is a better offensive lineup for Kentucky, I think. We're just staying on the floor. And we got one or two as we did the last trip. Down to six, though. It was 12. Time. They cut it in half. What a great job containing. These kids are so quick. Quickly, the three. That's off the mark. Rebound Louisville to Sutton again. Get that little early drag screen at all. And it was shut oh, this guy. Which he just got back in there, and he's looking at Coach Calipari as if to say, uh, Coach, what am I supposed to do? Well, he did shove him, though, on the catch. That's four on number four. Uh, he has that difficulty once in a while. Watch this shove at the end. Uh, it is a shove. I, I think he may have been able to let it go, though. I remember back to practice last a week ago Friday in Las Vegas and they re-ran a drill because Nick Richards played so aggressively on defense and 
Coach Calipari said, let's do that again. Nick, do it just like you did it. He said, make them call a foul on you. Well, they call a foul. <laughs> They're calling plenty on him. Uh, he's really had a nice impact on the game, though. You can remember that far back to Vegas, huh? I can, yeah. Kentucky's eighth team foul. And Louisville's only got one, so free throw shooting could become a big factor in the next 14 and a half minutes. Although you got to hit him when you got to change. I was just going to say, those 0 for 2s or 1 for 2s. Down to 5, though. Maxie on a runner. Had a block, but it's going to be a foul on the man. A little ridicule applause. And so Tyrese Maxey will go to the free throw line. Hasn't scored this half yet, but had 13 big ones in the first half. And missed the front end. Monday at 9 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. Don't miss a matchup between Tulane and Penny Hardaway's number nine Memphis Tigers. Uh, interesting with Warren not coming on the floor. Would you agree? Yes. Uh, maybe either. Maybe he's sending a message. I don't know. That or maybe not feeling well. He should be next to me. Oh. <laughs> Comes with feeling poorly. That's the 14. The Kentucky 80% from the line has helped their cause with a six point lead. Open middle with Williams on the floor now. Could open it up for a draw. Ooh, look at that. That was deep and contested. Nice job by Maxie to get just enough in front of the corner that he didn't get that three pointer away. But now the drive and the score by Malik Williams. It was deflected. They're looking for a double dribble. Going down the stretch. Team in red has really buckled down, I think, defensively. Kick out. Brooks is going to bring it right back in after having an opportunity, and he turns it over. Instead of an open shot, it's a turnover. That's a lack of confidence. Not shooting the ball well. Open 15-footer. When it was 38-26, to 26, you and I were talking off the air during the commercial, and we said, what do you think they had? Enough in them, meaning Louisville. We kind of looked at each other and said, we think one more push. Well, here it is. Uh, they got, we got their answer. Well, that's dangerous going under against McMahon. Kimball, fresh, three. Uh, this kid wow. has been a winner no matter where he is. Quick timeout by John Calipari, but Lamar, fresh, Kimball. Our question was answered. Yes, they have a run in them. Next weekend on CBS, it's back-to-back -back days of college hoops. Starting on Saturday with ninth-ranked Memphis hosting Georgia. And on Sunday, there won't be a lot of love lost in East Lansing, I don't imagine. Number 14, Michigan State hosts 11th-ranked Michigan here on CBS. Now looking over at the different huddles, of course, uh, Louisville wore on the bench. And if it is a message, it's a heck of a message, obviously. So. But you've got it going wide, go to him at this point. So I think we'll see the same lineup. They've just been terrific on the defensive end. Finding ways to score on the offensive end. This is a 15 to 2 run in the last, let's see, about three and a half minutes. And lighting it up in a hurry. And so Steve has been very quiet. I think they've got to use him a little bit. Both in and out, he's effective. Just to loosen it up for the guards. Here's Maxi trying to drive the lane, and he's fouled by Sutton. There's quick hands on that curl. Pretty good reaction defensively, but the reach in cost him. That's only his first foul on Sutton. And you can see a little bit of a scrape. Higgins. Tough shot. Got up the air and couldn't figure out where to go with it or what to do with it, I think. How about Williams, the big guy handling the ball? Good decision. Now he's posted up and free. Inside block by Montgomery. Terrific reaction. That would have given Louisville the lead. Montgomery saves that. 
with a defensive jam. The last time they came up with a block shot or a steal on one end, it turned into three points on the other end. They'd love for that to happen one more time. He's got the hook. A oh, nice hands. And it strips. And Kentucky turns it over. Oh, Williamson. Terrific play defensively. Kimmel really playing with a lot of confidence right now. Sutton for the lead. Kept alive by Williams. He has been really a factor. Kimball a little fadeaway. Rebound off to Montgomery, and he got fouled by Sutton. You could hear that one over here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 11.43 remaining at Rupp Arena. We got a good one going between the Cards and the Cats. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Progressive. Bundle your auto, home, and motorcycle insurance. Bright House Financial. Build for what's ahead. And by Chick-fil-A. It's the little things that make game day worth celebrating. Well, the Louisville Cardinals found themselves down by 12 points. They have battled back to a one-point deficit with 11.43 to go. And they've spread the wealth, really. Different guys doing a good job. Here it's, comes Warrow, right? Do they? Yeah. He hasn't played in quite some time, and he has been non-effective when he has been in there. You know, I did watch the bench during the game, too. He was into the game. You know, you look to see the body language of players. He was emoting. Applauding his teammates. Sometimes when you have a guy that's a great scorer and he's not scoring, he can tend to get into a pouting situation a little bit. And they're going to need him and everybody else here if they're going to come back from the deficit and win on the road. I pouted a lot as a coach. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> he was pouting last night with a check. <laughs> Here's Justine on a low block. Either hand. Working against Warren. Good. Got it on the hook. Good coaches come with something out of the timeout. Hall of Famer, John gets the right guy to knock it down. And we're ready to come to you now. Three-pointer by Enoch, rims out, rebound Higgins. All the guards have to rebound with Kentucky, and they do a good job. Right, just it. Maxi, way too strong. It's the first time he's missed badly since the one three-pointer he had to take with a shot clock one. Oh, the feed to Enoch didn't go down. Perry can track it down out by us here at midcourt, though. No shot clock. They didn't go to 20 because it hit the rim. So, let's just take another look. How about this ricochet? Big time. Nice little ploy coming out. There's an overload, and then they exchange high low. Warren is quickly on him, one of the baseline. Still hasn't touched it since he came back in. Here's Perry for three. Wow. How about that with confidence? Only his ninth three-pointer of the year, but boy, that come at a good time, and we're tied at 43. Yeah, 30% shooter. Maxi got a runner, got it. Well, what a great pull-up. This kid likes to take over. 16 for Tyrese Maxi. Now the crowd asking for defense as we're past the midway point of the half. Nice cut. Perry backing in on Maxi has to give it back up. Enoch, a triple in route. He got it. How about the big guy roaming outside? He shoots it with a lot of confidence. First lead since 15 to 14 for Louisville. Well, he can beat you in and out. There's a lot of talking defensively as well, Enoch. Quickly. Rebound off to Sutton. So Louisville playing with a lead for the first time in a long time. 
Little high low action again. Enoch trying to go up and under. Wow. He had it and missed it. And now there's going to be a foul on Sustina as Wara tried to follow. A uh, nice little inside game enabled that little follow up by Jordan. Well, a nice little kick. Ability to make deep shots. Unselfish team. And here's the fifth made three by Enoch this year. And that gave the lead back. So Wara with just a three point play in the first half. Even from the free throw line, it's a struggle. Yeah, I was thinking if he makes these, maybe he gets untracked a little bit. Last year in this matchup, he had 17 points and seven rebounds. And today he's blaming himself. <laughs> it's just hitting the chest even after missing the free throw. Well, some days it's not your day, so just let it come to wow. you. Hey, well, look at this offensive rebound by Sutton. Sutton missed it. Richards will clear it off. Laura missed two free throws. Quickly and Maxi on that right side of the court. Thought one of them was going to take the three, but they didn't. And Richards once again in that low box area. Just don't even look at him. Maxi turn around from the elbow is short. Richards has got to give him their, his address. <laughs> and they got an offensive foul on the load up by Enoch. Richards ran the floor. It's the third on Enoch. Right. There somewhere. And yeah, that's a little arm lock. Hook and hold. Well, he'll come out at least briefly. Looks like you and I. Closing time. <laughs> 14 points. Including that big three-pointer. That has the score where it is right now. 46-45. Large dribble drive, use those bumps on the box area. I think they should do a little cross screen and get some touches inside. Higgins against Kimball, lost the handle. Louisville coming back on the run. Perry, the kick out, Sutton for three. In and out. And Higgins has another rebound. We got five on four if they want it. Maxie will take it on the other end and got it. for Maxi, and at the seven and a half minute mark Kentucky back in front he is not afraid of the moment that kid offense, offense. offensive foul Richards now you got to reward him with some touches Chris Mack not happy with it but Maxi maximizes his opportunities talked about them struggling from deep not him Get some organized. Knocks it down big time. Kentucky, as you look at a game summary, a team that's had trouble shooting from outside the arc in the past few weeks. And Tyrese Maxey, for one, who's two for 20 in his last five games, and he's four out of five outside the stripe right now for 19 points to lead the way for the Wildcats to the lead. Louisville still trailing by two. Bill Murray in the house. You know, Morsey checks out the scoreboard because his son's the assistant coach, Luke Murray. But the point's amazing without war how they've been able to spread it around and compete. Bill slapped me on the shoulder before the game when he was talking to you and said, call them both ways, Nestler, and I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. We're just going back and forth. Uh, that was Luke's wife alongside him, Kara. Here we go. Final 720 of regulation. Kentucky by two. Kentucky's got to be careful. They're running out of bodies up front with the foul problems. This guy's been the star today. Tyrese Maxey, the freshman. Quickly hasn't been too bad either. Oh, nice defense by McMahon. And quickly draws the foul on the inside from McMahon. Well, he did really move his feet beautifully. Got him a little bit late. With the pressure they put on you with the bounce, these Kentucky kids, good with it, and also quick. Here's a guy you want at the free throw line. If you're Kentucky, he's 31 out of 33. 
from the line. That is, I don't know, you do the math, right? 93. About 94 and a half, 94 percent, somewhere in there. If it's not 94, it will be if he hits this. Are you even it out with the IRS? <laughs> <laughs> Start your new year with a little evil. Three hours of evil begins Wednesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. It's two hours of evil when I've worked next to this guy. <laughs> Is it me or... No, it's you. Yeah, well, uh, this is another thought. <laughs> but it seems like the team's playing much harder this year to me. Everybody. I mean, it's just... I think they have all. to. Yeah, they, they, just to compete. Yeah. There's a foul trouble situation that Raph was talking about. And we're under seven minutes. As Kentucky's pushed it back to four. Williams tried to cut it to two, but he's fouled by Montgomery. And now there's continued foul trouble. That's four on him. Uh, three bigs have four. They run out of bodies. Now Cal Perry keeps looking down at that bench like, who do I have that doesn't have four? Well, they, they, the two guys he looked at both have four. So he's going to bring in number four. Who's the tallest of the ones that have four? Nice little dive. Got to make the free throws, though. Williams really, really got himself to that box area. Malik Williams, who missed eight weeks with a foot injury, had a screw inserted in that right foot. But he and Enoch have combined for last year combined for 18 points a game and 12 rebounds a game in conference play, but. You can't go 5 out of 12 from the line and expect to win at Rupp Arena. Yeah, not a good free throw shooter. Maxi, pull up. Check. That was too easy. A little confusing. No one talked on defense. And boy, does he square up beautifully. 21 for Maxi. Enoch will drive three. Not this time. Maxie with a rebound. That was Williams on the three, not Enoch. Thank you, partner. Warren's not even getting touches. <laughs> Kentucky would like to use a little bit of clock, you would think. But quickly, he doesn't worry about that. Maybe he should have. Williams with a rebound. A yeah, little too much early. The lead for Williams. This is the best I've seen Kimball play. They're really taking over, getting a little more comfortable in the system. Martelli's sort of pupil there at St. Joe's. There's Phil at Michigan now. That was a walk. And they got a jump ball. Okay. Yeah. Possession goes to Louisville. There's John on the sideline begging for one, but right here we see the. Yeah, I think it was the right call. Ashton trying to get the pass out of there. Turns it over at the 5 10 mark. But if you don't contain the bounce on either team, you are going to be decimated. It's a little elbow set. These were warmer. They'd like to give him a bump. Still looking for his he's, second field goal of the day. He's not being aggressive, do you think? Like he doesn't seem to be moving without the ball very well right. to get open. And that's his game. Last touch by Kentucky. Right back at Richard. Yeah, it's so easy for the ref to call that too. And now he's got four. We're gonna run out of players. <laughs> That's an easy one, you're right. Now Richards Richards has really done a good job, I think. A lot of good things for his club. Situation now. Sistina coming in. Enoch goes down with four fouls to six. Kentucky on the floor with under five to go with Haggins, Justina, Richards, Quickly, and Maxie, their leading scorer. They have an empty side here, then the full late. Nice pass. 
And last touch by Louisville Kimball. So a little bit of a break there for Kentucky. That's what, late in the game in the last two minutes. They would look at that one. Yeah. It had some smoke on it. Richards wasn't going to be able to handle it, and then Kimball tried to save it, knocked it out of bounds. And actually, the lob underneath to Richards when it's picked off by Williams. Heady play, backed off, took care of his band. Well, John's out of the coaching box. And they warned him once earlier in the half. I don't know. Goodness, come on. He was coaching his team. I know it's the rule. So that's going to send Warren to the free throw line. Warren went right to the line. I'm not sure they wanted him on the line, but maybe this gets him on track. And he hits it. It's only two out of four from the free throw line. And now Louisville with the ball, so they've gained one on that to cut it down to three now. And they got to put a stop sign up for John. Now they're talking to him again. I know it's the rule, but. Driving against Sestina in some traffic. No call underneath there. And then Williams drops it in. He's got seven in this half. And it's made it a one-point game at the four-minute mark. And look that drive by Sutton. Set it all up. A little pin down. Maxie trying to free up from Sutton. He'll get it inside of Sestina. On the low block. Quickly on a runner off the window. Rebound, Sestina had it momentarily, and now Richards gets hammered underneath. Well, you better come armed. Uh, got a little words going on. The referee's trying to straighten it out, Williams. Higgins came to Richards' defense and got in Williams' face a little bit. And Tony Barbie upset. Trying to calm things down, but Goodness, you better put the helmet and the shoulder pads. You're going to be right. seeing a little bit of that in the next couple of days. Woo. Woo. Getting heated up. Whether it's John Calipari, Chris Mack, or the five they've each got on the floor in a one-point game. It's been 12 years since the Cardinals have been able to beat Kentucky at rough. Five straight losses in there. As we went to the break, Nick Richards, after he hit the deck and was fouled, you see Malik Williams sort of trip over Emmanuel quickly or shove him. And then Hagen's got in there. Pat Adams got in the middle of it. Pat just came over to us and said, nothing there, just a few emotions. And uh, both benches, especially on that end, the Kentucky assistant coaches coming out to get everybody dispersed. Nice piece of officiating. Tony Barbeek was a little upset, wasn't he? He was. But Maxie didn't want to get a T or more problems. Nick Richards, one out of two from the free throw line today. Kentucky is the 13th best free throw shooting team in the country at almost 79%. And he shoots it at 72. Rotating, trying to protect him a little bit on the defensive end. He'll come out now with those fouls, so they put Keon Brooks back in. Enoch back in with Wara, Perry, Sutton, and the man with the ball in hand, Kimball. Ripley's got Wara. Kimball for three. Got it. Goodness. He has arrived, I think. Two big threes in this half. And Louisville back in front. And Zach drove the backcourt. Higgins nice leads play. it for Sestina. Very nice play. Two, two. Count number one. Three minute mark, Kentucky by one.
Sutton looking for Warren. Get the switch now. Eight on the shot clock for Enoch. Here's Warren against Sestina. And oh. he's bumped by Sestina, that's and that's it. Oh, this is, that bar from the basket, small change, not a good play. Enoch should have just taken the guard right to the box, too. So Nate Sestina will leave with 2.43 remaining. And Richards will come back in for him. They're just running out of body. If you see, just reach it in like that, you just can't do it. I mean, it's an easy call for the official. Just move the legs. And hand check on his right shoulder bicep area, and he's done for the day. All right. He's explaining it to the players. They don't really care. <laughs> well, the coaches wouldn't listen to him. Okay? So Jordan Wara, who came in averaging 21.2 points a game, has four right now. And has only shot 50% on his free throws today. And another one rims out. Just keep hanging in there. A lot more better days ahead for him. He's a talented kid. That's really struggling. Jordan Warren for our second time of the half of the fourth of the game, and he's got it. And we're even at 55. And foul trouble has already cost Kentucky one player, and they've got other guys with issues. It's got to be the guards to step up now. Maxi working against Sutton. Richards will take an outside jumper. Sutton with another rebound. Richards guarding Williams with those four fouls. Pretty good defense on the wall. Two zeros with Higgins and Kimball, and Kimball over Higgins missed that one. Rebound to Richards. And the outlet to Higgins. We're under two minutes, and the pressure starting to build in a tie game. I don't think they want that pick and pop for Richards. That'd be something going to the rim or give it to him on the low box. Or let this guy fire away. Maxi on a runner up the window. What a tough angle. A sweet kiss. Nice play. Oh, might have been a walk. Williams with a hook shot. Tied again. Quick counter. Perry. I thought Perry might have taken an extra step, but he was going so fast. He couldn't <laughs> say it. Hard to tell. You know Maxi wants it, so he's got to be sure it's a good one. And quickly, did he draw a foul from Kimball? Did he did a little nick on that curl. But all the guards are so good using those curl screens as the head coach gets together with his guys. This is just an unbelievable angle for that little kiss. A sweet one. And the ability to draw people and the clever dish with the left hand by Perry. Quickly perfect from the free throw line today. He's still only missed two free throws all season. Totally incredible. Under tough circumstances, able to stand up there and knock him down. Looking for some divine intervention there. As he closes his eyes and envisions the next one going in, I guess. He's saying, I'm glad they don't have to listen to those two announcers. Trying to close his ears as well as his eyes. You can almost hear us in here right now. And he got another one. Six out of six from the strike. Kentucky by two. He'll be under a minute. By the time Louisville takes another shot. Be careful of McMahon on any dribble drive. Enoch wants it, a little duck in. Here he is against Richards. 
A little shoulder bump, a little shoulder bump. Here comes the hook. There it goes. Beautiful. Patience, and nobody went down and scraped and helped. You got to lunge down there and help the big guy. Not much Richards could do. So we've been tied at 55, 57, and now 59 with 46.6 to go. Checking on the clock again. This has been delightful, by the way. Trying to see if they have to add some. They're pretty good the way it is. I think they're ready to go. They added a second. One second. Now these games make you so tough. Coming down the stretch of the season, too. Here we go. I'm going to go quickly, get a good one. The Saints get a two for one. Maxey rolling the baseline. Sutton trying to stay with him. Richards set a pick for him. Maxey going to the rack. Got it to go. What a hesitation and finish. Career time 26 for Tyrese Maxey. Timeout Luda. What a show the kids put on at home. Tyrese Maxey's given Kentucky a two-point lead. Game reset. Louisville's got the ball. Kentucky's got an extra timeout and the possession error with 24.9. And I want to correct myself. Maxi, 25 points with this drive, but it was impressive. And the way he stood his man up with the hesitation. And how about the strength to linger in the air and get the old oh, sweet roll? Now the other end, McMahon's in the game. He is terrific screening and popping. And if he doesn't have it, dumping it down. I would like them to run their horn set with Aurora on the foul line with Enoch on the other one and get into some sort of a high low. Let's see how they set it up. It's McMahon, Sutton, Enoch, Aurora, and uh, Kimball. And now John Calipari calls a timeout after he saw who Chris Mack was going to put on the floor. You now she's still getting over Santa coming earlier this week, and it's been a tough, long week and a draining game. But I don't know how anybody can sleep through the noise in here right now. <laughs> but Mom will explain it to her later. Yeah. Uh, this is just to get it in and then get their set. You don't want to gamble. You want to be basic defensively. And anything inside, you must help out a little bit. Here's McMahon on the inbound from Kimball. Kimball's been good from outside the arc. Enoch doing a good job. And Richards is excellent defensively in there. Kimball against Brooks up and under was tipped by Richards. Richards got a hand on it well, and went in anyway. Well, they're saying best to get the fairies maybe count it either way you can count it either way yeah. it's not going to matter it's pretty good weak side help by richards to come over and get a piece of the ball and the rim but it goes in for kimball i think louisville may, yeah they won the last time out it's their last time out with 10.6 remaining in a tie game Louisville's out of timeouts. Kentucky's got one remaining. 10.6 seconds remaining in regulation. And the 53rd meeting between Louisville and Kentucky's been all we could have asked for and then some, right? I didn't really see some except coming down the stretch here. They love to run that little curl with Maxie running off those two posts or maybe a ball screen out high where he can hesitate, draw the big, and then use that explosive bounce to the 10. Maxie's been the man offensively today for Kentucky. Quickly has been second in line. And you can never count out Ashton Higgins because of his quickness. And of course, the big thing is they miss. Louisville's got to possess it. And the offensive rebounding occasionally 
available. Here we go. Higgins will bring it into the front court with seven. Maxi, ball in hand, on the drive against Kimball. Fading on the baseline, didn't get it. Put back, is in and out. Overtime. Wow. Well, Maxi felt he got bumped on that baseline drive. They let him play on, but that's the danger. That offensive rebound. It's horse country, <laughs> but it's pretty good basketball country, too. They're not horsing around. Not at all. I like the non-call, too, but just terrific pursuit. How did Brooks. that tip by Brooks not go in? It was uh, halfway down. Unbelievable. And this is what happens in these situations. You forget to check out. And he is... Can't believe it. Great opportunity missed. Overtime coming up from Rupp Arena. Stick around. Could have been separated Louisville and Kentucky by 75 miles of I-64. And here we are in overtime, second time ever in 52 previous meetings. Uh, you would think Louisville the advantage because of Kentucky's foul problem. Right. Uh, the, the guards have done a great job for Kentucky keep in the minute. But it's a friendly rivalry. That's right. Who said animosity earlier? Well, just to give you an idea of what this game means to Kentucky fans, for one, Dave Baker, a good friend who's a sportscaster here, does a lot of Kentucky basketball, came up to us and he said he was walking in this morning and one of the security guys, they call them the blue coats around here, he said, how was your Christmas? He said, I had a stroke on Monday. He said, you mean this past Monday? He said, yeah, Monday. He said, what the heck are you doing here? He said, it was a mild stroke. <laughs> That's what it means to these two teams. They carry it to any length. It is a wonderful atmosphere. All right, so Enoch and Keon Brooks, the jump center here to begin our overtime session. And Louisville has not been able to establish a rhythm. Let's see what they come out with. And remember, their leading scorer, Jordan Wara, has only five points in regulation. And an overload left, little blow by. And Sutton, great drive and a foul on Brooks. That's, that's what they do beautifully. Little misdirection. So Wara clear, overload right, and the glue. Little fake as though he's going to take the ball screen, refuses it, and the ability to hang some up the pot spit. CJ Montgomery comes back in, and Brooks will sit. No finish on that one to finish it. He took a hit in the schnoz, too. You'd be out for a week. <laughs> That's for sure. So Sutton with. 13 today, four over his average, and trying to add one more to it here. And got it. And that's the biggest lead of the second half, or obviously overtime for Louisville by three. Yeah, we had that graphic early toughness, and that's what he is, Sutton. A little too big, he's got to get inside. Maxie has to give it up too quickly. Now Higgins trying to reset it to 10 on the shot clock. Did the work on his own. Ran into his own man and walked with it, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he was pushed. Oh, goodness. He ran into Nick Richards. Yeah, I thought he walked. So Kimball picks up his third. Nice be on the SWAT down there. Oh, he got him a little bit in the ribs with the left elbow. Ashton Haggins has not scored this half. Until now. This has not been an easy game to referee. You know, no. Conflicts, and shoves, pushes, elbows, you name it. And Hagen's a great free throw shooter, missed the second one. Now oh. looking for a travel violation, don't get it. He's got a little back screen to get Enoch to the block. Warner is really out of sorts in terms of where to be. Five to shoot. Low block, Enoch's hook shot. 
Oh, nice Kept feedback. By Sutton. There he is again. And now War on the drive. And he had it blocked by Montgomery. Big defensive play by E.J. Montgomery. And actually hasn't touched it. Trying to get free of Sutton. Back to quickly. He'll take it. Got it. Nice job getting free. Really used the big guy. Great footwork. Two point field goal for quickly. Kentucky by one at the three minute mark. Kimball goes down hard. I think he's okay. Yeah, that was a terrific drive. Just couldn't elevate enough. He's, I would say, a cramp, if anything. Hopefully. Nothing for free at that rim. Great collaboration. And at the other end, just a nice fade. Reading the defender. Great angle for the pass and then the ability to convert. He's still sore over there, though. Hobbling. Maybe he needs a long time trainer. Another look at it. It was Apple Gabe, and of course the knee collapsed a little bit, too, huh? They work on Fresh Kimball, and he's in a lot of pain down there at the end of the little bench. And you know, once the Machine shows, this kid is so competitive. The big game 31 points against West Virginia, Illinois. No time. Got to hurry. And then fouled late by Maxi. So good at that. That kid has made himself into a legit basketball player. From a spot-up shooter, the intelligence to put it on the deck. You see him go to the rim a little bit. The poise under fire. And just to accentuate, get the attention of the officials. 17 out of 18 from the free throw line on the year. Everybody's having trouble today. Yeah. I don't know what your stats are coming up. Couldn't want anybody else on the foul line, would you, no, Philly? You Time That's in overtime. More like it. 65. 65 with 2.45 to go. And Sutton's got the matchup here. Quickly run to the baseline. McMahon and chasing, but he got the shot away. Off the mark on the three. He's going to get the rebound. So, oh, of course. He, he reached instead of grabbing it. Here's Warren. Wow, what a big shot after a tough day. How about that? Stepping up. It's been a struggle. Maintained his poise. Didn't take a bad shot. Didn't force the issue. He got mobbed by his teammates after hitting the biggest shot of the day, at least for him. 2.20 remaining in overtime. Louisville back in front and up by three. Louisville on a big three by Jordan Wara. 68 to 65, and just when they needed him, he comes through. And the matchup was not the right one with Montgomery having to come over and help out. But look at that. There is a God. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but he has just maintained composure. And you just see everybody understands when a guy is struggling. It happens. But ready to deliver and convert. There's Kentucky's foul trouble. Sestina already out. A batch of guys with four. John Calipari's Wildcats try to snap a two-game losing streak. He just looked at the crowd and said, how about a little help? How about a little help? They're trying to get him up. 
Three losses before New Year's doesn't happen around here very often. Four screen for Richards. But Higgins gave up an open three. Great perimeter D. Maxi against Wara. Off balance shot. Richards keeps it alive. He's fouled in one. For Nick Richards. For a guy that doesn't get many touches, he gives them a big time lift. A couple of offensive rebounds, good defense, and right there just wards off does a great job without fouling too, as Williams caught a little deeper than he would like. A fire up Nick Richards. And an opportunity to tie the game in overtime. They got to be ready now. Both sides, you got to squeeze if you're in red shirts. And then be tipped back out. Big foul shot, Nick Richards. Under two to go in overtime, even at 68. Lickers back out. We're running the show. Kimble. Yep. Tough kick. Guarded by Haggins. Kimball around everybody. Lost the ball, but he's fouled. They said to reach it. I thought he lost it. But if he had fouled on quickly. Just had the hands in there. Well, he can turn and go left. Uh, you got the hand in there. You can see it. Yep. Quickly about the only guy that's not in foul trouble, Ian Haggins for Kentucky. First trip to the line for Lamar Fresh Kimball. Now the crowd getting loud. Hoping he could somehow miss another. And he did. Wow. And the rebound is Montgomery. Kentucky a chance to regain the lead with 90 seconds left. Everything's been the guards. Maybe to pull up and get Richard to touch. There he is. There it is. Good call, Bill Raftery. Kentucky by two. Good driver. Oh, what a settled. long three. Settled. And the rebound, Maxi had it. I don't know if he got bumped or not. They're going to give the ball to Louisville. They're going to look just to check. Last two minutes. A little lobbying going on with John. Here's another look from the baseline. There's Maxi who had a hand on it. Oof. Ooh, I think I that's Kentucky ball. That's my first guess. That's what I thought when I saw it in live action, but right. Off the foot. Oh, it was off the Kentucky foot, I thought. Oh, maybe I got my, oh yeah, I do have my sneakers mixed up. Yeah. One's red, one's white. Sorry about that. You're not on top of your Jordans, no, are you? I am not. Good call. Nice and easy. So it wasn't the hand, it was the foot. You would call it a footfall if you were doing tennis. <laughs> and there it is, right off the right foot of Tyrese Maxey and out of bounds. So the call was correct. And both coaches love this. They get a free timeout, a free shot. Matt Adams and Don Daly over there. At the scores table. Got to be satisfying for us when they get it right. And it's authenticated. Yeah, off the 
point. And also be checking the time as well. Although 59 1 is what it's at right now. I don't see that changing too much. So Kentucky by two in overtime. Louisville ball. They have earned their paycheck today, these refs. Okay, Pat and just Pat just told us what I was thinking that they were looking at the clock more than anything else. They added three tenths of a second. Fifty-nine point four remaining in overtime number one, Kentucky by two. Watch Warmer on this inbounds play. If they lob it to Enoch, he will duck in or he'll get a cross screen and a curl. Uh, they're looking for the dummy play. They didn't get There's it. The Enoch gives it right back to Kimball. Loves that little bounce to hook. And bouncing with Richards, and Richards can't get a piece of it. And Enoch ties it up at 70. Big game for Stephen Enoch. We're down to 40 seconds in overtime. Maxie run on the baseline. Sutton has been chasing him all day. Don't forget Richards low. Oh, don't lose the ball, though. Maxie the lob to Richards. He's fouled by Wara. A nice read by Maxie, too. Wara just got over there a little bit late. Empty side. Roll to the 10. The screen open up, face the ball, and look at Warren. Very alert, just a tad late. Richard's really tired, though. He's, he has worked hard. Final couple of words from Coach Calipari. He walks back to the free throw line. Where he's hit his last two and three of his last four. Nice job. He has been very impressive all game long. This is part of finding things out about your team. More touches for him as the year progresses, I think we'll see. When you look at those two and you wonder who's buying dinner tonight. <laughs> and two good free throws for Big Nick Richards. Two point game in overtime. 25 seconds to go. Kimball guarded by Higgins. Here's McMahon, the long three, right into the hands of quickly, and he's fouled. Kentucky ball going the other way for free throws. Well, that was a quick, deep one. I think they expect it more. Well, they got it up the floor, too. Kimball just couldn't turn the corner. And quickly couldn't get it up court fast enough to get to the free throw line after he's fouled right there. A uh, nice little job getting free, but a little deeper, I think, than they expected with that Enoch pin. Emmanuel quickly. We saw him visualizing earlier as he's hit all his free throws. He's got the eyes closed again. I promise to be a good boy. <laughs> Please help me. Please make this 15-footer go in. Both of them, preferably. There's one. Now your job if you're Louisville is that push. Try not, if you Kentucky, don't let Kimball get it. He's got great speed. Has a career high game going right now, 17. Make it 18. And they get up on Kimball now, trying not to let him turn the corner. Kentucky by four in overtime. Kimball timeout called in front of us with 14 seconds remaining.
Both teams leaving it out there. Now it's a case, a quick hitter. Get that too quickly. Get your pressure set up. Chris Mack looking up at that scoreboard, wishing there was more time. A uh, dribble drive you can do quickly, maybe a slip pass to one of the bigs. So it's going to be a front court pass. Kimball will probably be the trigger man as we see who they bring out. Because if he does take it out, he's going to hit and follow. I think I'd rather him on the floor, trying to get free and then turn, explode to the rim. Kentucky's going to come out defensively with quickly Richards, Maxey, Montgomery, and of course Haggins. And Louisville will counter with Sutton, Enoch, McMahon, Wara. And you're right, they're not going to put Kimball as the inbound man. It'll be Sutton. And be careful of McMahon, too, on the dribble drive, getting free for a three. Cross screen lob. And Neoch knocked it away, and now it goes to Kentucky to Maxey, and he's fouled. That was the last thing Louisville wanted to happen. Interesting little cross screen running away from the green to the catch. Very difficult. John not putting anybody in the line for fear of going over the top. Tyrese Maxey will go to the free throw line where he's three out of four today. His season high was against Michigan State when they took the number one spot from the Spartans when he had 26. He's got 26 again. This could be a spark for them. Emotionally, confidence. Especially after the losses to Utah and Ohio State in Las Vegas to come back to home cook. And there's a new high for Tyrese Maxey and a six-point lead for Kentucky. And a steal. Higgins, what a way to top it off for the Wildcats. The 53rd edition was a dandy. Kentucky wins it in overtime. It can't get much better. Both 